Hi guys, it's Daniel here, and since last week I didn't create a video because of the USMO, this week I'm going to create two videos to make up for it. And this is the second video, and I'm going to talk about 2017 USMO number 6 this time. So, let's first take a look at the problem. Find the minimum possible value of the cyclic sum of A over B cubed plus 4. Given that A, B, C, D are non-negative real numbers such that A plus B plus C plus D equals 4, and we see that an inequality actually appeared on the USMO this year. So, well, unlucky or lucky for me, but let's take a look at the problem anyways. Um, for, so first we find that they don't actually give us an inequality to prove. They tell us to find the minimum possible value. So first we have to actually find it. So in inequalities, typically an equality case might be A equals B equals C equals 1. So if we try that, a, B, C equals 1, A, A, A equals B equals C equals D equals 1, then we find that the, uh, the expression equals 4 fifths. So this is, uh, this is one of the possible minimum values that we might have to consider. So this isn't the only possible uh, set of values for us to check though, because we can also check, for example, when some of the values are 0. In particular, if we check 4, 0, 0, 0, when three of them are zero, then we get uh, we get one, and this is greater than four fifths. So it might look like one 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 actually gives the minimum possible value after all. But we're not done here. We have to check when two of the variables are are zero, and in this case, set the other two equal to two and two. And if we plug this in, we get we get let's see two over twelve plus two over four. That's uh, that's two thirds. Two thirds, and that's actually smaller than four fifths. So we have our new contender for minimum possible value now, of two thirds with two two zero zero. But of course we can't just stop here. We have to check when there's one zero, and all the rest are four thirds. And in this case, well, this looks quite nasty. TLDR, we find that whatever we get here is greater than two thirds. So our most likely candidate is 2200, zero, zero, giving two thirds as the minimum possible value. So um, uh, we want to set out to prove that two thirds is the minimum possible value here with equality case 2200. Zero, zero. So the first thing we might think when solving uh, problems like these with a fraction adding up to something greater than a constant is Cauchy Schwartz, in particular, uh, Cauchy Schwartz in angle form also known as T2's lemma. But we find that if we try T2's lemma, it looks like it might not work because it doesn't seem to preserve our equality case. It seems to only naturally give A equals B equals C equals D equals one. So that might not be the best idea here. But a second idea that I have for uh, some of, of fractions is considering the sort of dual of it. What I mean by the dual is um, considering an uh, alternate expression that I can make it so that we have the sum of the fractions is actually less than or equal to a constant. And let me show you how I do this. So if we take a over b cubed plus 4 and we subtract a over 4, then we get a times 1 over b cubed plus 4 minus 1 fourth. And what you see here is that if we do this, we get 4 minus b cubed plus 4, so the b the 4s the cancel out. So we're left with negative b cubed over 4 times b cubed plus 4. So if we do this to all of the expressions now, all the fractions now, then we get that the cyclic sum of a over b cubed plus 4 minus a over 4, we want to prove is greater than or equal to 2 thirds minus the cyclic sum of a over 4, that's a plus b plus c plus d over 4, which is just 1. So greater than or equal to 2 thirds minus 1. So if we substitute what we found right here in, then we get that. We want to prove the cyclic sum of a o times b cubed over 4 times b cubed plus 4. And here I took out the negative 1. I divided both, divided both sides by negative 1. So we have to actually flip the equality sign. This is less than or equal to one third. 
In other words, we can have this four. Uh, we can have this four actually get multiplied to both sides. And our now our new equality to prove is a times b cubed over b cubed plus four is less than or equal to four thirds. So this is what I'm talking about about considering the dual of this fractional inequality right here. We have a similar fractional inequality, but this time the inequality is pointing the other direction. So now what? Which one of these looks simpler to prove? Well, the top one, the original one, looks simpler, but the bottom one kind of suggests something quite nice. In particular, if we take a look at b cubed over b cubed plus 4, this looks a lot like some sort of complicated function in terms of b. And for complicated functions, what we can try to do is we can try to bound them with a simpler function to try to make the inequality simpler. So if we want to bound it, then we want to bound it so that the simpler function uh, can be bounded above by a plus b plus c plus d, a linear term. So ideally, we can bound this above by some constant factor. And then we can have a times that constant, b times that constant, c times that constant, and all of that. And then it will all just cancel out and we are left with an equality. That would be the ideal case. Unfortunately, b cubed over b cubed plus 4 cannot be bounded above very easily by a constant factor. It's, I think the best is you can bound it by 1. But that, that doesn't really tell us anything. It gives us a false inequality. So um, that can't do. So the next best bet is probably bounding it by a linear term. Because if we try to bound it by a quadratic or a cubic, it gets complicated fast and also um, it doesn't seem to look as nice. So let's try to bound it by a linear term. So we want to bound b cubed over b cubed plus 4 by a linear term. So some some sort of like some sort of like uh, line in terms of b. And how might we do this? Well, first let's uh, draw a little sketch of what this graph looks like. So this is the negative side. We don't really care about the negative side, but if we draw it, it should look something like like this. So if we want to bound it by a line, then probably we'd want something like something like this. Note that we don't care about the negative side, so we don't need to bound the line. We don't like we don't need the line to bound the function on the negative when b is negative. We only need to have the line bound the function when b is positive or equal to zero. So the ideal line we ha might have is a line passing through 0 and passing through this tangency point. And what we actually want is, since the equality case is 2, 2, 0, 0, it'd be really nice if this tangency point was at 2. Because then we could really just get that equality case immediately, since the line uh, is equal to the function when it's equal to 0 or 2. So let's cross our fingers and hope that um, this line indeed is tangent at uh, b equals 2. So in order to find this tangent line, um, uh, we have to do a bit of calculus, unfortunately. So let's go about doing that. So the derivative of b cubed over b cubed plus 4, so if we take the derivative, then using the quotient rule, this is equal to 3b squared times b cubed plus 4 minus b cubed times 3b squared all that over b cubed plus 4 squared so now let's plug in um, b equals 2 to find the slope of the line tangent to the function at b equals 2 so let's see when b equals 2 we get that this is 12 times 12 minus 12 times 8 over 12 times 12. 
and this is equal to let's see get rid of 12s on both sides let's we have 4 over 12 1 third so our slope is 1 third so that means the function the equation of the line passing through uh, tangent to our function at 2 is 1 third x minus 2 plus um, uh, what is the function evaluated at 2 well that's just 2 cubed over 2 cubed plus 4 that's equal to 8 over 12 that's 2 thirds plus 2 thirds and oh boy if we expand we get 1 third x minus 2 thirds plus 2 thirds wow we actually get that it passes through 0 comma 0 so magically we find out that this actually works out so we can bound b cubed over b cubed plus 4 by 1 third b and nothing over here so now that we've shown it with calculus of course we don't want to use calculus on the actual use mode unless we have to so we can try to prove this inequality using algebra and thank god it's actually quite simple if you just expand and then simplify then this is equivalent with b times b plus 1 times b minus 2 squared greater than or equal to 0 after using the rational root theorem or whatever your favorite method is for factoring and uh, this is true because b is greater than or equal to 0 so we have this really nice simplification right here and uh, let's do that to our inequality right here and we're left with the cyclic sum of a times b over 3 is less than or equal to 4 thirds and this simplifies to the cyclic sum of a b is less than or equal to 4 so this is not ideal because we have a quadratic term on one side and a, and uh, it's not linear so we can't automatically get rid of it but it's pretty much as ideal as we can get because this is quite a nice cyclic sum because the degree of each term right here is the same and if you are familiar with a certain inequality this should immediately tell you that you're done because in fact you can bound the cyclic sum of say if your variables were x1 x through to xn x1 x2 you can bound it uh, above by the sum of x1 plus x2 plus x3 and the precise inequality is actually four times this is less than or equal to x1 plus all the way to xn squared so this is the uh, generalized inequality that I will leave to you guys as an exercise but in this case um, we just want to have when n equals four so uh, our inequality is cyclic sum of a b is less than or equal to a plus b plus c plus d squared but remember if we multiply by a plus b plus c plus d squared we have to multiply by 16 on the other side so um, after multiplying by 16 and canceling with this 4 right here we get 4 times cyclic sum of a b is less than or equal to a plus b plus c plus d which is precisely the format of our generalized inequality right here um, for this inequality actually there is a quite nice way to solve it if you expand everything then it factors as a minus b oops a minus b plus c minus d squared is greater than equal to zero so that finishes of course another way is you can also just factor the left hand side first as four times a plus c b plus d and then we can use amgm on the term a plus c and b plus c d and then we get our uh, inequality as well so if we review what, I, what, what we just did, um, uh, we took a look at a this, this thing and saw that it wasn't very nice. So we considered the, uh, the sort of dual of it, where the inequality is facing the other way. And looking at the dual, it gave us the idea of bounding this complicated expression with a simpler expression. And we found out that miraculously, everything worked out and we could bound it by one third b which reduced our inequality to a special case of this general inequality, which further reduced to a simple 
uh, square is greater than or equal to zero. So um, uh, this inequality seems to be finished, so we are done. And as a note here, although I transform it to the dual to get the idea of bounding this complicated function with a simpler function, you can actually solve the problem by bounding uh, the function 1 over bq plus 4 by a simpler function as well. Uh, you can bound it by a, li a line from below. But I feel like um, this is less motivated because it might not be as obvious to take this as a function in the first place. So I like how I did it by considering the dual first. So, yep, that's all. Thanks for watching. And I guess we're done here. And the 2017 use mode just finished, so let's go over some of the problems. This is problem number one of the 2017 USMO. So let's first read the problem. 